Despite what their moms told them, they just aren't talented enough for radio. Unfortunately, anyone can have a show these days. Sean. Well, I'm pretty hard to figure out sometimes. I can't even figure myself out sometimes, so don't you try to. Joe. You're an idiot. And really, a disloyal person. This, this is the Cuse Militia. Those two unapologetically biased, orange-blooded homers, Sean and Joe. It's the most bullshit thing I've seen in 30 years. Welcome, orange men and ladies. Happy Sunday. This is the Cuse Militia with Sean and Joe. At Cuse Militia on the socials. Go there. Join the Militia live on Twitter X spaces at some point today. And uh, Syracuse basketball has got another week off. And football is wrapped up as far as playing goes. Early signing day is complete. And we'll talk a little bit about, I guess, we can talk very, very little bit about (laughs) the bowl game. That was a total disaster. And then, um, you know, we'll talk about some recruiting news and then... uh, We'll we'll finish up with Pitt preview. Neither team has a game between now and what is it? The when they play in next Saturday. So uh yeah, I believe so, yeah. Yeah. So we'll go over that and let it simmer and uh that'll be it. And then we'll see you next week and a week from today. Um, Joe. So the the bowl game. Mm. Um Kind of troubling, I guess. I don't know. I, I think I expected a little bit more. I'm going to be honest. I mean, I had better things to do, like sleep. So I shut that thing off at the half and um, kind of more of the same, but with less success as far as the Wildcat goes and all of that stuff. And um, Braden Davis comes out and he's kind of looks like he's got a limited playbook. He's on and off the field and... I don't know. It was kind of sloppy. They got the the team itself didn't look prepared. Um, there was some early miscues with the LaQuinn Allen issue. With I don't know what he was really trying to do. I don't know if he was if that was a designed play. He was gonna. It was. Uh, yeah, maybe you abandon the design play when you're surrounded by defense, and uh, you know could have avoided that one. But not only that, but you know you go to finally put points up on the board and. The, the snaps fumbled uh, on the field goal attempt, and that ends up being another disaster and all the momentum with um, the Bulls. So I, I expected to score. I don't remember what the score was at the half, but I know that. 31 nothing. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> oh, that's right. So, uh, so you know, I, I did – I did hold off and 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 see what we could do before the half. I think it was ended up with like twenty yards rushing or something like that, and there's just nowhere to go. And um, you know, you got a third string rookie quarterback in there that is you know just doesn't have the experience nor the time to prepare. In my opinion, right? It's just it's too bad, unfortunately. It happens, although I thought we'd be able to be creative enough to... I thought we could win the game, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> I thought we could win the game. I didn't think it was like... I didn't think it was like completely uh, out of the realm of possibilities to, to win right. this game. Both teams were 6-6 six and six coming into it, and it just um, looked unprepared. Maybe Syracuse is hanging out at the beach too much and not... Um, maybe it just wasn't taken seriously. I don't know. Just the the the, the look of it from the optics for me were were not good. I'll just well say that put it that way. No, yeah, no, they weren't good at all. And um, honestly, um, you know, you got three weeks to handle that stuff. You know, we haven't shown anything in the last four weeks that says that we were going to do anything different. Especially considering, okay, yeah, the last week, well, um, Garrett Schrader somehow pulled. Some passes, you know, the last couple ones he had before, um, you know, surgery out and won us the game. But, you know, South Florida knew that Garrett Schrader wasn't going to be there. They knew that 
um, uh, who's the backup? Why well, is it Carlos? <laughs> Del- yeah, Carlos. they knew. Yeah, they knew he wasn't going to play, right? And so they also knew that the other guy that could throw was a freshman or Valari. So they knew exactly what they were going to do. They were going to stack the box, and they were just daring us to throw. And um, I think before we could even settle down and try to figure anything out, we just we made too many mistakes, and they scored just way too fast for an offense like that to be able to come back from. So you know, it just was. One of those things where when when that ball of shit got too big and it started rolling downhill, there was no way we were catching up to it or stopping it. So, um, you know, it's just kind of is what it is. It, it sucks. But, um, you know, I thought the same thing. Like, we could, we could sit up there and, you know, if we could do that to an you know, ACC team, then maybe, you know. But we had other threats out there at that point um, that the other teams had to worry about when this was literally strictly just a, a worry about Valari and LaQuint. Um, and you obviously saw that based upon, you know, LaQuint's average and, and what he had as far as total, total rushes. So uh, South Florida defense, their strength was against the run. And we, that's all we tried to do when they were three to two, three weeks to prepare to do it. So, um, yeah. I mean, you got two guys that can de- – I mean, I know that. I've seen Valari throw the ball better than what he – I think he threw an interception, if I remember right. Uh, two interceptions. Uh, two interceptions, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've seen him better than that. And I think that at some point they realize, okay, this isn't going to work. We need to try to – get the passing game going and I just don't think that they they prepared enough to have to do it. <laughs> you know, I thought that Oh, they absolutely didn't. I, I mean I, and then I think I mean, we, you get you got two guys that can throw. They didn't prepare enough to do it. And when it comes to plan B, they're like shit out of luck because it's, <laughs> no one knew what to do. It was just like caught him off guard so bad. And and defense wasn't great either. So all, just all around bad. The whole thing was all around bad. It's disappointing, but but predictable, well, yeah. right? The problem is, well, the problem is too is is that I mean, what did they have? Uh, they have what two defensive touchdowns in the? Yeah, uh, they, they did the the one the the field goal attempt that I was talking about. That was the scoop and score, wasn't it? Yeah. And then there was, and I they think got was, one near the end of the half when it was twenty four yeah. nothing. So yeah, so I mean, the scoop and score. I mean, you're talking. We were going down there to to kick a field goal to make it seven to three, and, and it, it doesn't know, feel bad at that point until all of a sudden it's fourteen nothing. Right, and then we punt, and then they score, then we throw an interception. You know, it was just, I mean. It wasn't like we were out of it. It just it was. It got to a point to where it was just we made way too many mistakes. You can't have four turnovers and have two of them go for touchdowns and give them that big of a head start. You know, it just happened too early, too fast. And then once that happened, you know, we really didn't. Like you said, we weren't prepared to have to come out and try to play to come back from twenty one, twenty four, let alone thirty one. Um, you could kind of see that. Uh, so. He was limited. Coach Nunzio talked about, you know, the things that, you know, they, they really tried to prepare for the stuff that they thought that was going to work and what they could do the best. Um, and that wasn't lining Braden Davis up at the shotgun and, and throwing the ball around. So, um, so yeah, I mean, like, again, you want it to be better, but at the end of the day, you know, we've been talking about this the past couple of weeks. I mean, and then people have questioned it, you know, is Fran Brown higher in the in the recruits and and everything like that in early signing day? Has that overshadowed, you know, this season, this bowl game, everything like that? Um, and to be perfectly honest with you, uh, you know, I hope that there's not too many, I mean, too many fans that that took this too seriously because obviously they were shorthanded, had some guys in the transfer portal, shorthanded coaching staff wise. Um, and obviously limited in what they could do. And this is not going to be the same team we see next year. So, um, you know, I just wanted to see them compete and, and get, a, you know, get close to have score some points, not get blown out. You know, it was a little embarrassing. But at the end of the day, no matter what happened with this win or lose, get blown out or blow them out, um, it's not going to change and shouldn't change the excitement for the team next year. No, and, I abs- it absolutely doesn't. I mean, it just caps off perfectly what the season was to some degree. I mean, the, the season really wasn't 
as bad as that bowl game, but it just it just is like kind of like what I said to you, and I'm like, you know, this is prob- this is why sometimes I think that this is a perfect example of why people don't look forward to m- meaningless bowl games, is because. I mean, it did, the, at the end of the day, the game didn't mean anything. Everybody's already moved on from this year in this situation, um, going into this bowl game because of all of the excitement that's surrounding Fran Brown and and the recruits coming in and things like that. So, you know, just it, the excitement wasn't there anyway. But it just it encapsulates the year really for me because when the when it started to fall apart, it really fell apart. Now, you know, you get. Garrett Trader coming in and, um, you know, playing his heart out in the last game of the season to get to bring the Orange to a, another game and get that 13th game and uh, become bowl eligible two years in a row. And that's all fine and dandy. But like I said, the, the Thursday night at eight o'clock time slot fit that game perfectly for Syracuse fans because <laughs> it's just it's like no one cared. No one cared. The, the Bulls cared. USF cared. That's that's who cared. It's and that's what it felt like. But you know, you you, it's it is what it is. I mean, I wasn't even mad at it. Like I wasn't even. I don't even think I made a noise watching that first half. I was just, <laughs> you know what I mean. It was one of those ones where it's like it doesn't mean anything. It sucks. It's kind of embarrassing. But we know what's kind of on the horizon. So let's just get this game. Which is why I shut it off at half. I'm like, it's it's done. It's over with. If they, even if they come back to win, it's like that would be awesome. But you know, it just obviously was not trending that way. So I wasn't worried about it. But at the end of the day, you know, this is just another game that didn't mean anything. And what everybody I think is excited about is is next year. So I don't think that there's many Syracuse fans that let this game get under their skin. I didn't really go on Twitter. I didn't ask for thoughts on the game. First of all, I wasn't up. But I didn't do it. It's been it's been <laughs> years, dude, since I haven't done that. Years, and it wasn't because I was mad. It was just because I didn't care, and I didn't think anyone else cared either. So uh, I could be wrong. Maybe it infuriated people. I, I just don't believe that it did. When we know what we have coming next year, uh, f- for me, it, it, to see the product on the field next year is. Really, really exciting. I can't wait to see what it's like. I, I, it sucks that we have to wait this long, to be honest with you. Um, you know, but I, I think that, you know, we're in a good place and that stuff, I don't think is 45 to nothing games. I don't think that's, I don't think that's a thing in the future. No. I mean, you know, we're going through so much change. Uh, South Florida, that's a team that was, um, you know, they, they, they spoke about it. That coach, you know, I think. Um, He's a kind of a lunatic, huh? Uh, a little bit of a lunatic. And, you know, <laughs> some of the comments he had under there, you know, when he went into there, no, oh, we went out and kicked their ass, huh? Like, you know, he was a little. But, about, yeah. Th- yeah. Um, it kind of kind of really um, low character, you ask me. Like, you don't, you, you shouldn't go in there and say, again, the game didn't mean anything. Obviously, it meant something to him. He's gonna put. He's gonna get some hardware on his shelf. But you know, I just think it's unsportsmanlike to to be a coach and a leader and and talk like that about the team that you just beat. That a team that you know is depleted and handicapped, and you're gonna go out there and brag about it. Like you know. It's yeah, just, it's I mean, cla- again, it's, it's classes. That's all. So. I mean, I look at it like, you know, I'm looking at it like he's trying to get his team kind of ready for the next season. Right. Um, and that's kind of where I'm taking it, because um, it's just it's a situation where he's a second year coach or a, it was a first year or second year. I, I don't know. I, and, but, and I only don't know because I don't care. I'm pretty sure. Well, yeah. Well, he was an offensive coordinator from Tennessee who had, you know, a pretty good offense. And, you know, that's just two different signs of a team. They talked about them winning four or five more games, hadn't been to a bowl game in like quite some time. It was in South Florida. You know, it's a lower conference playing against the ACC. So they had all they were pumped up and had all the the, the reason in the world to to want to go out there. And that was like, you know, their Super Bowl for the season for all intents and purposes. Um, and for us, it was kind of the opposite. You know, we were we, we had 
main guys hurt. We had guys in the transfer portal. We didn't have our coaches there. We've already fired a coach. Then there's all this outside noise. Um, so, yeah, you know, I, I think as far as our players go, and I'm not going to speak for them. Obviously, they wanted to win the game. You want to go out with a win. But just being able to just get in a bowl game, practice a couple extra weeks, and then go down to Florida in the middle of the winter from Syracuse and be able to just enjoy yourself a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. You know what I'm saying? That's, <laughs> so, what I'm, I mean, that's my problem. They might have they <laughs> they lost, might... but I think they still won a little bit. Yeah, they won a vacation. That's what they yeah. won. They won extra practices yeah. and vacation. Yeah, pretty yeah. much, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, dude, like I said, it doesn't mean anything. I felt bad, like – and if you don't For think them, Fran but, Brown wasn't down there recruiting during that, you're crazy. Yeah, well, he. Um, I wonder what he thought. There was a couple other guys know. there too. I think. Um, I think there was a couple other guys there. Uh, and Kyle McCord, I think, was there, and there was someone else too. I think so. Uh, speaking of which, let's talk. Let's talk about the incoming class, Joe. They've got their. Um, According to 247, Cuse, yeah. Cuse Nation, their transfer rank is 13th. And their composite rank on the re, just the recruits coming in is 46. And it gives them an overall rank of 35, which is – is this up to date? I'm pretty sure it is because nothing's happened. We did. I get, thought our transfer portal was better than that. but Well, we just had – Josh Miller was the only one since – Early signing day it came what yesterday I think, so um, no early early signing day I think it was Wednesday or Thursday. Oh, was it okay? Anyway, yeah. uh, well, according to two four seven, that's that's what it is. Transfer rank thirteenth, composite rank forty six, with the overall rank of thirty five, which is the best so far uh, in the modern era for Syracuse football. So, uh, you know, I you know, there's no doubt that Fran has the ability to recruit. And, you know, I, I, I think I'm with Joe on the, the stars and stuff, you know, like the, the star rankings, you know, it's just whatever to me. We, we saw what they did to uh, Fidel Diggs, uh, what rivals did anyway. 247 still got him as a four. And there was um, the King Joseph, right? Didn't they knock him down to a three, two? He was supposed to be a four, I think. No, it wasn't him. It was um, Zed Haynes. I think it was ha- uh, Hornsby. The receiver transfer from Texas A and M. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, he's not even on this list. Anyway, he's not on the list, and uh, maybe that's why you think that the rankings a little better. He's not on this list according to two four seven. Anyway, um, what transfer? Yeah, the transfers I got here are. Oh yeah, jo- no, he was a recruit. He was a he was a he was a recruit. So. Oh, yeah. okay. You said transfer out of Texas A&M. Oh, well, yeah. Sorry, he was a flip. My bad. Oh, okay. We flipped oh, him from Texas. Oh, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Uh, what was his name? Jalen Hornsby. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, two four seven has him as a as a three as well. So a, yeah. a, a couple of that the the King Joseph thing. It was a big spectacle. I really hope he shows up. <laughs> okay. And, and I'm fine. I'm, I mean, look, these kids do these kids. You know, obviously, I think that um, he is uh, a, a good character guy. You know, but the, the the and they do they they announce however they want to announce all that. That's fine. But you know, if you're gonna put on a show like that, uh, you know, I want to see a show on the field too. So I'm I'm really excited though about this. Jamie Tremble, because I remember Coach Fran talking about using tight ends. You know, he got a four-star tight end coming in, right? Um, he was 23rd in the state and 13th in his uh, position out of Georgia. Yeah. So um, nationally, 196. So I'm super, super excited about Jamie Tremble. Um, and then of Elijah Washington from Norfolk. I just, I love the, the you know, the, the, Local guys from my area going and playing for my team, I think is awesome. So I'm um, pretty excited to see him. He was ranked 19th in the state. So, um, and then there was a, when I was looking at these earlier, there was a there was another one I was pretty excited about. Um, oh, King Joseph, 
that was that was the, that was the other one. Those those three I got my eye on as far as recruits go. But you know we've got three offensive linemen in here, right, Joe? Really, Willie Goodacre, Noah Rass, R- Rosa Hack, and then the Joshua Miller. So we've got. Right. A, it looks like you got a lot of offensive talent. You know between. Um, some of the transfers, obviously Kyle McCord and uh, Zed Haynes. Um, you got Jackson Meeks, and um, we just the one you just mentioned there, um, the the receiver, Jalen Hornsby. Hornsby. You know, and we also yeah. refli- we flipped Emmanuel Ross, who was um, a higher ranked receiver than Hornsby um, from Stanford as well. So uh, we definitely have some offensive fire power coming in, some edge rusher, uh, edge rushers, and even defense alignment, you know. Um, but, yeah, no, I mean, I think the most important thing is is really that Joshua Miller, that that uh, transfer was actually pretty pretty key. And I see Kyle McCord out there on the socials trying to get some guys and, and everything like that. I, I just, you know, that's really the main thing is, is I don't want this to turn into a, a, you know, a Deion Sanders situation where he got all these athletes but then he doesn't get – you know, the offense and the defensive lines be able to, to that, take yeah. care of it, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, the good thing is is that, you know, we're only losing uh, Chris Bleich on the offensive line going into next year so far. I mean, that's barring anybody going into the transfer portal. Um, but – And we look uh, to have Joe Moore back. And, yes. And there was another one, I thought. Oh, um, 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 Wallaba. Wallaba, yeah. Yeah, you know, and then we bring this this transfer over from Georgia, which you're hoping because that's the one thing is you look at you can look at the high school recruits. I'm never going to expect um, a high school recruit, especially you know a three star recruit coming in as an offensive lineman, and, and say that they're going to be ready to to go out there and and start and actually dominate on the offensive line. Um, so um, you know, I say the good thing is is the returning talent. You know, the fact that he's bringing in different strength coaches and and then different coaching staffs and we got this transfer coming in but I said the bad thing is is that the, most of the guys returning on it I mean that was our, our trouble was pass blocking so Kyle McCord's great but we need the guys to they're going to keep him upright and um, yeah he's not you know, going to be he's yeah he's not going to be able to perform if we don't have an offensive line looks like they're looks like they're trying and I don't know how many I think if I remember right how many scholarships are left Obviously, I think we're over right now, but I think obviously they've they're playing in on, you know, probably some people leaving and stuff like that. I don't know if we can look that up real quick, but you have to imagine there's there's plans of shoring up the offensive line. It's obviously an issue. It's been an issue. Oh, yeah. I don't think that Fran Brown's just going to put a bunch of athletic guys in specialty positions and you know just expect that this is going to totally turn around because. Obviously, that's wishful thinking, but not bright. And I think he knows what he's doing. Right. So um, you've you've got the you got the specialty positions pretty well full on on offense. It looks really good. Yeah. And uh, you even have a few pretty awesome ones on defense. So. Oh yeah, yeah there's guys to look forward to, and especially considering that I mean we haven't even spoken in, but um, Rondé Gatson has made it official that he's coming back too. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So. I mean, I don't know if Alfred's if Alfred's a senior, if he doesn't have any more eligibility or not. But you're talking about having a chance of returning all these receivers, plus getting two receiver uh, transfer receivers in from um, Georgia, and then a Rondé coming back, um, and and there's probably going to be a couple more that are that are in the fold there. So obviously, we know that there's you know the transfer thing isn't over with. You know, National Signing Day is until what February seventh or something like that. So we still got a couple months. And, um, you know, I, I would just say that I, I don't know exactly what the, tr- you know, how many scholarships that we have, but I know that we've only, we've gotten seven people in, to transfer to the 14 that are apparently outgoing transfers. So, you know, whatever it was. What was it? Our, you said 17 to 14? I think no, seven, seven to 14. We have oh. 14 players that have announced they're going into the transfer portal and we've only gotten seven transfers. So I don't think that scholarships is going to be an issue, especially considering that as far as high school goes, I don't think that we had, but, uh, what, 18, 19, something like that. I looked, I can't, 
I can't find. There's like no no real. eighteen eighteen commits. Eighteen so, yeah, commits. So. Nine of them are for New Jersey, I think. <laughs> Something like that. It's yeah. Some ridiculous, yeah. Right. So you got to figure we brought in eighteen commits and we have seven transfers. That's what twenty five, but we have fourteen leaving. So really, we've only we've only added eleven, you know, scholarships to our roster. So you know, I I would say that you know we definitely have the the capability and the space to go out there and get what we need. So, you know, it was nice to get these guys, but I still think that, you know, some, it could be a possibility that some, some of the better transfers are yet to come because as spots start to get taken up, you know, you got to go somewhere. And now he's got two months to basically, I know there's a couple high school recruiting guys that, and there's one guy that's going to be, I think Marcus Barnes jr. He's a corner or a safety or something. He's going to be uh announcing an all-american game on january 6th but other than that you basically got two months to fill your team out with whatever else you can find in transfers and there's still plenty of talent out there yeah i agree but we'll see it's exciting i'm sure this is going to be you know news on the weekly kind of overshadowing basketball a tiny bit but i mean it makes sense i understand why it, you know, there hasn't been this much buzz about recruiting in quite some time. And, you know, I understand it. So we'll keep an eye on it. You said February. Yeah, that's right. I think that's right. February what? 7th, 7th? 6th or 7th, something like that. Yeah. Um. So obviously we'll revisit again and we'll talk about them as they come up. I think uh, my I'm just looking for I'm looking for a strong offensive line. And um, if they can do that, dude, I just. I don't think, I think this this offense would be almost yeah. unstoppable. Well, I mean, don't get me wrong, too. A lot of our guys, you know, they still got you know offensive line. They still got two, three years of, um, you know, eligibility and stuff like that. So, you know, it's not like we don't have guys that are capable. You know, we just need to bring in just a few guys that are going to be able to to fill those gaps. So. Um, so I think Josh Miller's one of them. It's a start. Uh, I know that there's a couple out there from Texas A&M and some other schools. So hopefully, um, hopefully it works out. We'll see. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, all right. Syracuse is going to host Pitt. This are we doing picks? Are we going to do that? Nah. No. This guy. Okay. Sure. This fine. guy. This guy just gets gets handled in football season on picks. Now all of a sudden he doesn't want to play anymore. Oh, is that okay? Come on. Is that why you think I said that? No. Okay, well then fine. I'll do picks. We usually do ACC. I just usually have a sheet, uh, and I don't. So I'll figure that out. But Okay. I mean, you know, try to keep track of those things. But anyway, uh, December 30th at 12 p.m., Syracuse is going to host Pitt. The all-time series between Syracuse and Pitt sits at 74-50 and 50 in favor of the Orange. This will be the 125th meeting between the two teams. Pitt's currently on a three-game win streak, and they've actually won uh, five out of the last six. Last year's 99-82 loss was Mintz, Gerard, Edwards, Taylor, and Williams in your starting five, and Benny with 24 points in that game. Syracuse had a 36-22 record against Pitt in the Big East. The two schools only met in the Big East tournament five times in 30 years of conference play, with Syracuse going 4-1 and one against the Panthers, according to orangehoops.org. Uh, both of these teams have the same exact record. They're both 9-3, and 0-1 oh in the conference. And um, Pitt has losses to Florida, Missouri, and Clemson. You know, Clemson's, they're playing pretty good ball. I've watched them a couple of times. Florida, Missouri, I have no, I have not done, I have not put eyes on them at all. So um, they're currently on a four uh, game win streak over West Virginia. Jesse Edwards with 20 points in that game. Canisius, South Carolina State, and Purdue, Fort Wayne. Uh, some of you might remember Blake Hinson from last year. He only played in one of the games, but the one he did play in, he dropped 25, um, 25 points over the Orange in that two-point win. He he, Like I mentioned, he didn't play in the second game, but this year he's averaging over 20 points a game. He's hit 45 threes so far this year. 
at a clip of 46%, 45 for 98. So he's almost thrown up 100 of them. Juxtapose that with Bell, who's leading our team with 30. He's 30 for 80, uh, which is not terrible, 37.5%. Hinson, he's followed up by a couple of guards. Ishmael Leggett, uh, a Rhode Island transfer. He's averaging 13.9 points a game. And freshman Carlton Carrington, who is averaging 13.8 points a game. Uh, so between those three guys, they cover forty, just about 48 of the 81 points that Pittsburgh averages per game. Pitt is 44.9% from the floor, 68.4% from the line, and 34.6% from three. So a lot of offensive firepower for Pitt, and we've seen how that can go. Um, You know, this Hinson, though, is a problem. And if he gets hot, then that's going to be tough. And we saw against Niagara, actually, how... Some good three point shooting by one guy can keep keep uh, keep you in the game, if not just take control of the game. And this guy's got the ability to do it. So um, Syracuse been a few been a couple of years since we've gotten a win against Pitt, and you know I feel like this team's better. I feel like this team can do it. I feel like the defense is better, um, and we'll just have to see how they stack up against some of these shooters and um, throw it all at it. And it's home game. You know, I got to imagine, um, you know, a conference play at home on a Saturday afternoon. You know, I know the Saturday noon stuff's tough, but, you know, it's conference play now. So it's time to get after it and, and fill that place and make some damn noise. And um, that at least going to give us a little bit of an edge there. But we'll see what happens, Joe. What do you think? Uh, yeah, so some of this comes down to the fact of when you look at their schedule, especially non conference schedule, it's always tough to. It is. It's always tough to figure out because they do got a lot of winnable, easy games in there, right? Um, yeah. You know, I do know that um, that they lost, obviously, to Missouri and Clemson and Florida, which, again, I would say that those losses are probably lower-tier losses to the teams that we've lost to as far as if you want to, you know, kind of compare yeah, well, um, they they are. Clemson's pretty good, though. I mean, they were they were. No, no, no. Clemson's ranked. Yeah, I, I mean, I get that. Um, but you know, Florida and Missouri isn't Tennessee and Gonzaga, right? So correct. Um, and you know, when you actually look at their wins, you know, they did get a win um, in a tournament game on a neutral court against Oregon State, uh, and they won by twenty four. So you know, in twenty four against a Power Five school. That's pretty good, and uh, they they won at West Virginia too by seventeen. And I will let you know that I do work with a guy from West Virginia, and um, they had a situation where they have a transfer, like one of their best players that's supposed to play that, that got, got denied uh, the transfer, and um, he hadn't been able to play. And they also had a a transfer point guard from Arizona that was suspended for the first you know nine or ten or eleven games of the season, so. West Virginia has been not that great. They only go in six or seven deep earlier in the year. Uh, Jesse Edwards and some other guy. I, I don't know, well, either five don't or seven. Who's... Yeah, exactly. Like so, uh, West Virginia though they are they they played actually yesterday without Jesse um, Edwards and Raquan Battle. Actually, you know the, obviously the state got involved, kind of like the Tez Walker situation with they, North Carolina. They lost and, against Radford, bro. I know, it's... but I'm but well, that's what I'm telling you is that West Virginia they're gonna they're not. They didn't look good early in the season because they re- literally re- only had like seven players they could play. But, you know, they played Toledo yesterday and they didn't have Jesse Edwards and Raekwon Battle, who's finally became eligible and then the, the point guard from Arizona. And that guy had 29 points. So um, and the point guard from Arizona had 12 points and 10 assists. So this West Virginia team is going to be – it's going to look like a better win, what I'm saying, is down the line. West Virginia is going to look like a better team down the line. But what I'm also saying is they beat a West Virginia team that really wasn't that great. So it's hard to get a gauge on them. And when you look at Pittsburgh last year, you know, they had, what, Burton and Elliott and Nellie Cummings. They had all these point guards that, you know, they have Henson and Federico, Federico and Diaz Graham. I mean, they had a deep team, guys that could shoot threes. And, um, you know, this year they're kind of replacing those three as far as Cummings, Elliott, and – in um, Burton with some freshmen. They're not you know, extremely deep either. I mean, 
Carrington is a freshman and Lowe is a freshman um, guards. And I think what Leggett is a uh, junior that is a transfer out of um, Rhode Island. So their guard play isn't nearly as good as it's been in the past couple of years. Uh, and, um, you know, obviously now they're going more towards, you know, obviously Henson's the carry he carried, you know, Jeffress, he plays good defense, but not great at scoring. Um, you know, and Diaz Graham, the Diaz Graham twins, um, obviously, uh, I think Guillermo is a little bit better than his brother getting, depending by the, the minutes, 31 minutes to 10 minutes last game. So, um, and then they have Zach Austin, who's a forward six, seven, two, ten uh, transfer from, uh, high point who's been putting in good minutes and don't forget about Federico Federico. So, I mean, they have names here that we've seen before. But I think that a lot of those guys, minus Blake Hinson, were really kind of just role players on the side of all the three guards they played last year. Um, And I just don't think that they necessarily uh, replaced them as well as they could have. So, um, you know, we will see. Diaz, Graham, and Hinson have given us problems. But at the same time, and that was in the zone. I think they had a perfect, you know, team for to play against our zone last year. And uh, I don't think they have the guard play this year. So... Now we're playing man. So we'll see. I mean, they could very well come out and beat us, but I, I just think that it's a way better matchup for us this year than than last year for sure. Well, I think that what you know, we've seen some people explode a little bit, but I just feel like the defense is better this year. They're getting the rotations are better and, and when you know, and the man I think has changed things a little bit. And it's kind of weird that um you know, with just about the same guys, <laughs> the difference. I mean, I know it's a year, it's a year, little bit of growth, you know, there. But you know, to change it up a little bit like that, it's been noticeably r- different. And um, when you think about what Syracuse has done, as far as how far they've come in their defense this year, I feel like it's it's promising. And like you know, we don't know what their floor or their ceiling is this year because they've just been consistently good. And um, you know, we'll see. There's always that doubt in my yeah. in my head, though. When I you got a guy that's hit 45 threes, that 45 threes on the on the year so far, and I understand the competition and and all of that needs to be taken into consideration. But you you still got to hit the shots. I mean, you're you're not out there by yourself shooting them. So right. 45 is a lot. He's taking 98. And b- believe me, that's their that's going to be their game plan. I mean, that's what they're going to be trying to do. They're going to be trying to just light it up from the outside. And those other the two guards, they're not terrible either um, from three, you know. No. Thir- 30%. Carrington and Leg- yeah, 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 no. So No, they're not terrible. But again, like I said, I mean, it's – I think that you know last year they had – they were guard heavy and then they had Henson and, and Graham and stuff like that that – helped with the whole situation um and then they're playing against his own so but this year i think you know them losing their guards and then us picking up guys like you know um jj starling and kyle cuff and then you know uh quite your coping getting a year of growth to where i think the game slowed down and he's getting experience right so like you take those four and especially considering quite your coping could whether another team goes small with three guards or they stay i mean he's still big enough to guard you know traditional small forward um, guy, so I mean, you bring in those guys now. You have and you're playing man, and those guys all play pretty good D. So I think that that has a lot to do with our defense and and, and everything like that. You know, I mean, we have really good guards. We're deep, and we're just going to throw waves at you. And so you got to be deep in that situation or in that position on a team. And when I see you know Carrington and Leggett both playing around 30 minutes a game, you know, I don't know how deep they go as far as guards guy I'm because I'm only seeing like they last don't game go again. deep on guards they got the low in Hewitt who um, yeah you know we're talking about let's see I mean last game against uh, Purdue Fort Wayne <laughs> um they only played what Leggett Carrington and then low were the only guards right and then it's probably they're looking at a Jeffress or um, a Blake Henson playing so they're a taller team, and it's just – it's going to be interesting to see how we match up against them. You know, well, who's going to play against Blake Henson? Um, are we going to be able to guard him? Because they are going to be bigger and tougher down low. So we're going to have to be able to – I mean, Benny, if Benny can go in and play, yeah, it's going to be – it's going to be huge. Um, 
but we're going to need him. We're going to need, um, obviously Brown to play and, uh, you know, how, how, how quick before McLeod just gets yanked. I mean, it'd be, it seems like with all that, it'd be kind of a struggle. And then offensively with Judah, you know, when he when he had trouble, when he has trouble getting inside, that's his game. And when he has trouble there, they, he struggles. I mean, and then, you know, they you can almost take him out of the game, basically. Yeah. And that's, well, I think, I mean, the key, I think one of the big keys here is I think we're going to have to be able to hit three pointers in this game. Because um, with their height and with the way that they guard, um, I don't think we're going to be able to just drive in, you know. So, I mean, obviously three-point shots, and if we can hit some outside shots early, you know, utilize the pump fake, and obviously, you know, moving the ball, you know, driving, penetrate, penetrating, dishing it off to the wide-open guys. Um, that's really what you're going to want to look for. And, um, I mean, yeah, it's just – just where it is. If we're going to sit there and we're going to drive and hope that we get fouled and go inside those trees, you know, then that's going to be tough. Um, and obviously, like you said, Henson can step back and shoot threes. Diaz Graham can step back and shoot threes. That's why, and he's pretty athletic too as a seven footer. That's why, you know, it's going to be tough for Naheem, but you know, we still got to figure out ways to use him so that he's, you know, beneficial for us. Um, but he, yeah, we're gonna need him in certain certain instances, and you know, I just I don't know if 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 Malik Brown can guard Diaz Graham at seven foot two twenty. So I mean, only time will tell. But well, it's just gonna be a different Pittsburgh team than we saw the last year. So yeah, and um, you know, not only that, but it's Pittsburgh. Yeah. And I mean, Almost. they're just so loathsome. I can't stand their fans. It's so obnoxious. Uh, yeah, I, no one wants to. No uh, one wants to lose to Pittsburgh, man. Come on, man. <laughs> no one ever wants to. Lose. I mean, no, especially th- Syracuse. They're on. Th- yeah, they're on three in a row right now. They've had our number. They've had. They. They've actually had our number. Um, in both sports. In both sports for a few years now, and playing them twice a year. Um. You know, Jeff Capel's been – he's done a pretty good job and uh, coming over from Duke to – to they did the transfer portal thing, right? Didn't they do that last year? Weren't they one of the teams that just, just, just threw everything they could at it from the portal last year? Yeah, I mean, they brought in some guys, yeah. Um, so, anyways. Well, uh, I know Nellie Cummings is one of them, so. Yeah. But. Uh, um, you know, they, I'd be lying to you if I if I didn't say this game's got me a little nervous. Mostly because it's the games that you really, really, really want to win. Just no matter what, just you seem to get. If you really, really want to win them, you're going to be nervous anyway. So this it's kind of it's kind of uh, nerve wracking for me. Um, this one. So it's at home. That's that's what I like about it. I just hope we can show up. Uh, so, yeah. anyways. Um, th- Huh. Ken Palm's got them ranked 44th to our 86th. So, I don't know. Who, uh, anybody who likes those type of... Uh, again, though, like, they've played one really good team. Right. One yeah. really good team. We've played three really good teams. All ranked. That's true. So... um and you know it wasn't is I mean the ugliest one was probably Virginia, but the other two weren't even that ugly until the very end, you know, and that yeah. was and that was early in the season. So, but again, you know, Virginia really did not let um, Judah penetrate, and that's where that's where things go south. So that's a that's a concern. Uh, all right. Let's do. Let's start our predictions off. We should have done Virginia, but we didn't. That's fine. We're full blown conference play now, though. So, and we got Duke next after this. So, buckle buckle up. Uh, buckle up, Buttercup. Buckle up. Uh, here we go. All right. So I think it's gonna be close. And I don't know. I don't really have any idea how to guess this. Guess this score. So I'm just gonna like pencil whip it. But I think it's to me a close game, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick Syracuse to win mostly because I I need them to for my own personal satisfaction. <laughs> so I'm gonna say uh, Syracuse wins at home, snapping this three game win streak of Pitts, seventy 
two to sixty nine. That's all I got, Joe. That's your turn. All right. Yeah, I'm kind of going to go with them for the same reasons. So, no, no, no. And I'm going to go Syracuse 75, Pittsburgh 73. All right. Okay. We'll see what happens. We shall see. Like I said, I'm more I'm more worried about you know how our uh how our offense shows up against their defense. So I'm worried about both. So I think both are a concern. Honestly. I understand if you gotta pick one, I mean maybe you're right. But there's there's I don't wanna say there there's Drastic negatives, but there's some pretty significant negatives to each side of that, each side of the ball. Um, all right. Oh, man, I hope everybody has a Merry Christmas, Christmas Eve. And I got I to gotta start cooking here. Uh, you know, it starts early. It's just two full oh, days. Really? Two full days of cooking. Yeah, I do the cooking now we're for here and bring over to my dad's house. I'm not doing the main, but, you know. And then tomorrow we just hang out. Tomorrow's like the one day a year that I don't get changed. I mean, you know, I just, what? I just, <laughs> I love. <laughs> Wait, time out. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. You want to restart? I just, yeah, I loaf around. I loaf around some pajama mm-hmm. pants and t-shirt type thing. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And okay. and then you know, just be lazy, drink coffee, and then my wife and I will kill a bottle or two of champagne uh, huh. with, with the mimosas. And then you know maybe a maybe a midday nap, I don't know. We'll see. I know there's football on tomorrow too. So which is, there is. I kind of like that aspect. That you know, that what they've been there's doing. There's NBA too. Um, what's the NBA? <laughs> <laughs> I, I love I love the NFL though on Christmas Day. I really do. I think it's great. You know. I, I like how they do more than, you know, one. It, was, it used to be one game on Thanksgiving for the longest time, wasn't it? Not, not, yeah. Now you have three time slots to last you all day, right? And, um, you know, even if it's not great matchups, it's still still football and, you know. Hey, 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 hey. What were the Giants playing? Is that a, is that a shot? <laughs> no, I, didn't, I don't even know. Are the Giants playing? Yeah, the Giants are playing. Who are they playing? So are the Raiders. I know the Raiders are playing. Who are the Giants Raiders playing? Are playing? Raiders are playing the Chiefs at 1. Yeah, Giants are playing the Eagles at 4.30. Oh, my gosh. Sounds like two ass kickings. Sounds so. like it does. <laughs> at our team's expenses. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and then uh, Ravens and 49ers at 8.15, both 11-3. and three. So that's a possible Super Bowl matchup right there, buddy. Yeah, I just got to get um, – you know, I've, I've got some – I'm in the championship semifinals. So I need. I just need some fancy players to show up. And um, I got two. I'm in two semifinals, and I have a lot of fantasy players on Christmas night. So oh, okay, I, I I do as well. I get it. I, I have a few. So, anyways, my point is this. So, I want everybody to have a merry Christmas. Enjoy the family. You know, be safe. Enjoy the enjoy the time off from work if you have it. And uh, I took an extra day, so four day weekend, and then you know go to work for three days and take three days off again. So uh, for the new year. So, anyways, I don't do anything for New Year's though. Perfect. So I can't stay up past ten o'clock. I was up till eleven o'clock last night watching that Bills game. Actually. Oh wow! I'm surprised. I know. Well, I had Josh Allen in, in the Bills defense, my fantasy team. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was like, I'm I'm picking up the Bills defense. Someone dropped their Bills defense, and they're playing the Chargers. This is a this is points, man. This is some points right here. And no, it wasn't. No, yeah. I mean, this is a a, a Chargers team that got you know 63 points scored on them against the Raiders. And uh, it goes down to the wire with Buffalo. It makes absolutely no sense. Uh, None whatsoever. And the funny thing about that is my two semifinal matchups, you know what my defenses are? One of them's Philadelphia. 
And okay, the well, other one is Kansas City. Oh, is it? That sounds like points to me. Does it? <laughs> yes, it does. The Kansas City's defense isn't that great this year. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. The Raiders, yeah. pl- you know, the Raiders have have definitely flopped uh, on a couple of the past few years with the Kansas City Chiefs games. But generally speaking, it's it can be one way or the other very very quick. Yeah, that's true. Where is it? It's in the Arrowhead. Um, it doesn't matter where it is because every game for the Raiders is an away game. Yeah. Yeah, it's at Arrowhead. Yeah, that's going to suck. Yeah, just like we're at Lincoln Financial Field. (laughs) So, anyways, all right. That's it. That's all I got. Um, Okay, look. I know it wasn't that exciting today, but try to give you a little something. Talk about some basketball. Let's get excited for basketball. Yeah. Excitement for football is what it is. Let's get excited for some basketball. I think uh, it's going to get good. So... Anyways, go Cues. We'll see y'all next week. For Joe, I'm Sean. We're out. Peace.